Let's in this video, we're going to go over how you can teach your dog to go to a dog bed or go to a place. Now, uh, this is a really important thing to do. A lot of us, we don't pay attention to this and we just kind of figure our dog's going to sit wherever. Something to consider is uh, right now it's winter time when we're shooting this. Some short coated dogs are not going to want to sit on a cold wood floor. Um, also, old and elderly dogs are going to need to have a soft place. Um, a lot of times dogs want to get up on the furniture. We, when they're puppies, we encourage this. And then when they get older, plus size, sometimes we decide not to do this. It's just like uh, for humans, uh, it's very difficult for a puppy to stop doing a behavior or having access to a privileged position. For dogs, the higher they sit, there is some rank or status that comes with that. So if uh, one of the things we recommend is not letting dogs on the furniture because it's starting a habit. You can always do it later on and it's very easy to give them access. It's very, very difficult to stop them from doing it. And it's not that I'm an old curmudgeon. A lot of puppies end up getting radial fractures in their bones because they're jumping off. Now bones uh, for puppies are very um, malleable. They're very bendable. Their joints are very soft. You can do a lot of damage. Your dog should not be jumping up and down or your puppy should not be jumping up and down. And this is more of an issue for some breeds than others like German Shepherds have hip dysplasia. They don't oftentimes don't, don't even want them walking up or down stairs. And so um, I just have friends who are behavioral, uh, veterinary behaviorists who have uh, seen all sorts of injuries. So I would recommend that you don't let your dog, uh, your puppy up on the furniture. That should be a privilege that you get to later on in life. And if you don't do it for the first year, later on you can invite once or twice without it becoming a habit forever. Now, when you're gonna do this, you're gonna need a dog bed. And I would recommend that a dog bed is a place in every room that you hang out in. That way the dog has a designated seat or place to go to. If you're on the couch eating for eating food and the dog's right next to you, guess what the dog is gonna try to do? So um, also if you have guests, the dog's gonna get right up in your guest business. If you have a dog bed, and this technique is gonna teach you to have, to, uh, to have your dog go to that particular place. Now, I'd like you to come up with a name for the dog, but I like just using a fun command word, and you can put a little post-it note here uh, behind it uh, as a way to help you remember. Where should you place it? You should not place it right next to the door to your house. A lot of dogs see that as now I'm the guard dog and I'm gonna be acting like a security dog. This is the place that I think works best is placing it right in front of the TV. Because the dogs are like, oh my God, look at my humans. They're just looking at me all day long. We're really just watching the TV. So it's a nice convenient way. It's usually out of, the play, out of our uh, walking space. So when you get a dog bed, uh, it's important that you take consider what type of dog bed you get. I see a lot of people get a dog bed that is like a donut. It's kind of got a, a rail around it like this one, but it goes complete. Or that looks like this and has crevices in it. Now this one you see it has a little bit of a lip on three of the sides and that way it makes it a little easier for when I'm tossing treats. If you get one that's like a duvet cover with a lot of ruffles or one that's really super furry like a mink coat, um, when you throw the treats on which you're about to see me do, the dog's going to have difficulty finding it. So I would recommend that you get one that's like a sofa cushion, this sort of material. Um, you also the color, you want it to be light cream, white or light gray with no pattern. Dog's eyes are not very good for detail. They are outstanding for movement, which is why we're gonna be tossing the treat. But if you have a pattern on it, sometimes the treat falls in the pattern and the dog can't see it. Um, I'm actually ironically gonna be using white treats in this one, but normally you're gonna be using a brown treat or some other contrasty colored treat. Uh, so when you throw it on there, the puppy can see it. All right, so uh, the first stage for this is we're going to uh, want to entice the dog to go here. And remember, you're gonna uh, need to uh, come up with a command word. So uh, now Quest is doing a good job of being on the dog bed. A lot of times your dog's not going to want to do that because guess what? You're not near the dog bed. So the position that I'm in right now is a great position to start practicing this with. Although you can certainly do this when you're sitting away from the couch, but you would like to have the dog bed uh, up against something so that if you throw a treat, you can use this a little bit of a backstop. Now I'm going to throw a treat simply to get uh, Quest to go uh, off of the dog bed so I can show you the, the uh, technique. Now when you're doing this, you're going to need to use some high value or some treats that are high enough value that your puppy is going to be interested in. I wouldn't use a super duper high value training treat for this because this is a really simple exercise. I'm going to be using the Charlie Bears today, but you can use uh, just about any uh, cookie treat would probably work. And a lot of, for puppies, you can actually use their kibble. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to throw that to get Quest to go away. When Quest is looking at me, I'm going to throw it there and I'm going to say, good. So when he has one or more paws on the dog bed, I'm going to say the word good. They vacate. And normally your puppy is going to vacate it right away. When they do, as soon as they're looking, you're going to throw another treat. Now I didn't say good that time because if you see, Quest did not put one of his paws on the actual dog bed. Good. So when you throw them, try to throw them on the back side of the dog bed. So the first stage is good. 
I'm just gonna keep on throwing the treat. I wait for the dog to vacate it. When he looks, I throw the treat. Good, make sure the dog sees you throw the treat. If it gets distracted, just wait. You can call it back if you want to, but usually if you're giving treats, most dogs are gonna be pretty harassing. You don't wanna start using a cue until you're about 90% sh certain or greater that the dog's gonna do what you want. So the uh, dog bed here, I call Venice. So I'm gonna go Venice. Then he steps onto the dog bed and gets a treat. He vacates Venice. So you'd say Venice, uh, you throw the treat and say Venice, or you could say Venice, actually I would throw the treat first and say Venice. Really Venice should happen right before the dog uh, steps on the dog bed, Venice. So you're gonna do this with about 20 treats and your puppy's gonna be off and on, off and on. So the, uh, the first way is tossing the treats and I would do that for about 20 treats the first time or more. Uh, second time, uh, second way to do it is to lure him into a sit or a down. And then the third way that you can do this, and I'm gonna show you with crust here, is I throw a treat there and I, uh, I and wait for the dog to just notice. Now I didn't do just, the reason I want you to do 20, there we go, well, let's see if he's gonna see it. Uh, this is a good illustration of I have a white treat on a white background, so it's a little bit harder for Quest to see. The third stage, I'll just pantomime, is you would actually throw the treat onto, there you go. Uh, throw the treat on the bed when the dog is not paying attention, so the dog comes back and notices on its own there's a treat there. So these are the three ways you entice the dog to start, but make sure you start off by throwing the 20 treats in a row. You might have to do it once or twice uh, the first day or two, uh, but uh, after two or three times, uh, one or two days, the dog's just gonna start checking these out, uh, the bed looking for it, because these are essentially $100 bills to dogs. If you go to a restaurant and find a $100 bill in the lobby, you're, every time you go in the lobby, you're gonna look in that same spot to see if there's another $100 bill there. Now the next stage is when the dog actually uh, goes onto the dog bed on its own, I'm inviting Quest here, but then you would throw a treat. So what we want it to happen is now when I go to the dog bed, then it rains treats. And that's important. That's an important distinction. At first with throwing the treat is an enticer, a lure to get the dog to go there. But after you've done it enough, they're gonna start liking hanging out there because they're finding all these good treats and they're gonna come back and check it in. That's when you hold the treat quietly and you're waiting. And then as soon as the dog gets back on the dog bed, you throw a treat. Now I'm enticing him for the purposes of this video. You shouldn't do that. You should just wait to sit there and don't like hold the treats up here like that or have a big jar on the, on the counter. The dog's gonna be looking at you for the treats. We want you to be nonchalant, there we go. That's a good example. So uh, now uh, another couple tricks for this. Every time that your dog leaves the room, leave a treat there. Now remember, I'm not saying the Q word, but every time your dog steps on here while you're doing training, you would say Jamaica each time they stepped onto it. Um, but basically, um, you can leave treats there. Every time your dog goes outside or out of the room, leave a treat there. Especially the first week, this is really important to really uh, get it in, uh, ingrained. Um, also, anytime that you get a new toy, the dog should actually find it on the dog bed. So again, it's another play, another good thing that happens. You can also get like a, a bully stick, or this is a tendon. You can uh, put one of these here. The problem with this, a lot of times dogs will get this and take it away. So the other thing that I would do is get a weight, put the weight right here, drill a hole through the middle of this, take a zip tie and zip it right there. Go ahead, Quest. Well, he can't chew it anywhere but here on the dog bed. So he's having, <laughs> there we go. I'm not a zip tie. Uh, but now the dog is gonna practice being on the dog bed and having something really uh, amazing happen. Now, um, another uh, type of dog bed that a lot of people like to use is one of these. This is a kennel, uh, a kennel bed liner. Uh, if, you're, if your puppy is really big on chewing, a lot of times they'll chew these things up and chew holes in them and chew the stuffing out. This stuff is, it's like a terry cloth. It's very difficult. They can chew on it a little bit, but there's really not much for them to come out of it. The nice thing about this is it's small and portable. I can take this to grandma's house and put it on the floor. And if you do this exercise, you can take this anywhere you go and throw it on the floor and the dog will naturally gravitate to hanging out and sitting there on its own. Quest, Jamaica. Well, this is my buddy Quest, and this is how you can teach your puppy how to go to a, or, or adult dog, how to go to the dog bed. Quest, you are a goofball.